What's up, beautiful people? Maria here from Stramonic Soul Sisters, branches of vibrational healing. Been a while since I've done a video. No shocker there. Pretty much start every video saying that. Um, thank God for my beautiful business partner who keeps our YouTube and all of our social medias alive with her videos. I always like watching them and it's just nice that one part of our partnership is is on her A game when it comes to that. Um, I'm a little bit more you know, behind the scenes. And then I show up when I show up kind of thing. So here I am uh, in my robe because that's how I like to live. <laughs> and it's very rainy and overcast here today in New Mexico. So it's just a perfect day to stay in your robe. Um, anywho, I'm jumping on just to share two things that just came through in a channeling, a session with a client, two messages um, as spirit has shown me will resonate with a lot of the collective. So um, I did tell this client I was going to make a video and obviously we'll keep them confidential um, and just share kind of generally what, what the question was and then what spirit showed me um, as the message for a lot of people that have experienced this. So we'll start with ghosting. <clears throat> Very uh, real experience for a lot of people. Either you've been ghosted or perhaps you've done the ghosting. Um, I've not experienced either either side of the coin, really. But I do know a lot of people have and, and do. And I feel like as the collective continues shifting through this evolutionary process and there's a lot more divide happening, I feel like the ghosting energy has gotten a lot louder. And today I was kind of shown from an energetic lens what's really happening there. Now, anyone that's experienced being ghosted, I can only imagine that it's very, um, I'm sure it's it's a crush to your confidence, your self-worth. It makes you question everything about yourself. And basically I'm sharing that based on people that I've worked with that have described this experience and what comes up for them emotionally um, when they're ghosted. And so it's definitely rips up that um, abandonment wound, right, in all of us. And just like feeling of, of not being worthy, right? So what I was shown for this individual and was told to me that is oftentimes what's happening in these ghosting situations. And also understand that what I'm sharing, it's it, nothing I share is black black and white. Uh, this is the end all be all. This is every circumstance. This is just a generalized, this is energetically what's happening in these relationships where someone is being ghosted. And so really what I was shown is just that there's a vibrational mismatch. Um, in this particular situation that the client asked me about, she, she had just started dating this individual. They've been on a few dates, right? But felt like there was a connection, a genuine connection. And essentially, she was asked to, um, you know, partake in something, do something that went against her truth, that went against where she feels she's at in her own journey, um, in her own self-worth, her, her value for herself, right? And so she stayed and stood in her truth, stayed in her truth, stood in her truth, um, and did not allow this individual to convince her, manipulate her, coerce her into doing something she essentially didn't want to do that was not aligned with what she feels is for her highest and best. So kudos to her. She's done so much work, someone I've worked with for a few years and just so proud of all of her successes um, and her growth and her healing. So how I was shown what happened once she stood in her truth, it's like all of a sudden this individual like dropped into another dimension. So while maybe there was or wasn't some conscious intent of him not reaching back out to her type of thing, um, what I was shown, it's much more of just an energy incompatibility. Incompatibility, yeah. Um, a, a mismatch in resonance. So when she met this individual, her energetic... Uh, we'll say vibration frequency was in a sense a match um, because there were things in this individual 
that my client would have normally been attracted to, right? Like almost residual energy she was still holding that this individual was holding that attracted her in. But it was like, then once her truth was questioned or um, threatened in a sense, she stood in it, which basically elevated her vibration, right? Because she stood in her truth, which is the loving thing to do for ourselves. It is the most loving thing we can do for ourselves. It's being authentic, being real. In a world that wants us to play by their games, by by their rules. They want us to play this game of life by their rules, right? And she was like, nope, I'm staying true to who I am now. And so once she made that decision, it was like this, I want to say it was almost like this quantum shift happened. And this individual literally just fell off into another dimension, right? Now, are they still on this earth plane? Yes, they are. They're in their, their own frequency vibration, which if we were to look at a scale as a perhaps denser or lower vibration than my client is currently embodying, right? So while the ghosting often feels very, very personal, what spirit is showing me is like, it's it's very, it's just energetic. It's this all of a sudden something happens and shifts where all of a sudden the energies are like, Whoa, and one kind of rises and the other one descends, right? One's ascending, one descends. And understand that this is not a judgment. This is not um, now that this individual will say is in this vibration they can never reach, right? That's not at all the case. It's just energy and it's just where it is in this in this now kind of reality. And so if you've been ghosted, this is kind of a, um, it, it's it's a message to help you maybe shift your perspective and to release these, these feelings that you have about yourself, that you're you're not good enough, that you're not worthy, that you're not, um, you know, you're not, you're not perfect, you're not pretty enough, you're not handsome enough, you're not whatever it is, right? All these stories that the ego, the victim part of us creates when when an abandonment wound gets ripped up, essentially. That's what it's really ripping up is that abandonment. So if you've been ghosted, the ironic message from this particular reading was that she didn't abandon herself. She showed up for herself. So in doing that, an energy that is not going to serve her higher self had to just fall off. It had to just dissipate. It had to continue on its vibrational path, right? And so there was really nothing personal about it. It was all energy. And it was to actually show this individual, hey, good job. You stood in your truth. And while in this now moment, it might not feel like you won, she literally was like, oh my God, it was a victory, wasn't it? I'm like, yeah, it was. And she's the one that saw that when I was able to channel it in that way for her to see like, this was not about you not being enough. This was actually ironically about you finally standing in your truth, in your power and not abandoning yourself. And so guess what? The universe is going to hear that and see that. And you will start attracting even more people into your life that are of that energetic vibration. And you'll have less experiences that are mirrors of maybe your old patterns, your old wounding. It's not to say those opportunities won't still kind of come in. And that was also the message is that this individual entered her life because of all the work she's been doing on herself. Um, this individual entered her life as an opportunity. You know, some people will say it's a task, but it's really just an opportunity to show her where she's at in her growth and where is she at in loving herself and fucking kudos to her for loving herself enough to say no to, to what was being asked, right? And to standing in her truth. And so if you've been ghosted, Yes, there's going to be the victim part of you that wants to take it personally, but try looking at the deeper, the deeper message for yourself, right? And realize that you're worthy, okay? There's, there's a reason the universe energetically created that mismatch for you. It's to show you perhaps you deserve more, not perhaps, but you do. You deserve more than what that individual can energetically give you right now. Okay, again, this is not a um, 
this is not to now shame the person that ghosted because anybody that watches this, maybe you've ghosted and maybe you don't even know why, right? Or maybe you've ghosted because on the flip side to things, this is also coming through right now, you're ghosting for the actual same reason, right? And there's an awareness. And so there's all of a sudden this energetic mismatch and like you can't even entertain entering that energetic vibration, if that even makes sense. But that's like how it's showing me. It's so, while maybe there's a conscious, like I'm not going to reach out to this person, I'm going to block them or whatever. What I'm being shown is a lot of it is not even like conscious. It's it's all energy driven. And this isn't to downplay people's accountability when you do know you're doing it, right? Again, nothing I say is black or white. Um, it's not, this is the end all be all, but it's to just give kind of a higher different perspective of what is happening in this energy of ghosting and even the word right ghost I mean we use that as as a we'll say synonym um for spirit but again this energy that we don't see um but it was like spirit was showing me like how when the ghosting happens it's just this vibrational truly this vibrational shift that happens very suddenly and all of a sudden these two things that were here aligned right are all of a sudden not there anymore they're like this and so one of them just kind of falls off into another reality wild to be kind of channeled it in that that way I've never thought of it in that way um which is why I know it wasn't me coming up with this perspective it was that sort of higher perspective of like well on an energy realm which is what you guys all live in this is really what's happening while the people that are involved in it it feels very personal like anything we go through in this human journey everything feels personal to us because we're people and we're in a human skin suit so everything feels personal, but it's not. It's literally an energetic mismatch, a vibration that no longer is vibrating at the same frequency. So see it as a, we'll say, gift from the universe that, you know, they're they're not in your reality anymore. Doesn't mean they can't come back into your reality or vice versa. But don't don't fight it. Don't um don't try to question it too much. And certainly don't question your own worth. That's good, what you're gonna want to do. Um and I feel like that's what the experience is bringing forward for people is so you see your own value and your own worth and to recognize that no matter what happens externally, validation or invalidation, it shouldn't shift how you see yourself and, and your own your own worth and your own value. So that was kind of message number one that I wanted to just share with, with anybody that might be experiencing this or, ha or has experiences. Second message I was asked, um, basically, is the end of the world coming with, with the election? It's basically um, what I was asked in so many, so many words. And does this individual need to go and basically doomsday prep and buy, buy all the water and buy all this and, and grow their own food and all these things, right? Okay, so I'm just going to quickly kind of touch on the, this whole thing. Uh, since I have started waking up over the last six, seven years, I was shown so much stuff, or I'll say I remembered so much stuff about the external matrix and all of the corruption and deceit and lies, um, that has taken place in that world. And I was also remembering shown ripping up all of my internal stuff, which was all mirrors of the external stuff right and I made another video a couple of years ago about like my first spiritual awakening and it was very um uh shaking to me it was very um shifting because it happened very quickly for me it was almost like an overnight like holy fuck I woke up and the world is a lie and my life is a lie <laughs> like it wasn't a subtle 
like, oh, I'm starting to like fall down. Rap. It was like, here it all is and you're ready for it. Thankfully, humbly, gratefully, I was also simultaneously connecting very quickly with my intuition, with source energy. And so having that connection spiritually helped me navigate all of the dark narratives that that I was becoming very quickly aware of that many people now are um, either just starting to to see and other people that watch this have known it probably longer than I've even been on this earth plane in this body. Um, so with that said, there have been multiple, we'll say channelings and predictions of the end of the world. I've, I've heard multiple up until this point. There were multiple times that we were supposed to be wiped out according to if you listen to everything out there. Um, and what I've really just recognized and now has been shown to me multiple times is that the world is waking up. Okay. We're all, we're all, everyone's waking up on some level, waking up, remembering whatever words, phrases you want to use, but it's happening. Um, we'll say it at more an accelerated rate right now. And it's just because there's physically more human bodies that are awake. And so the amount of information that's being pumped out by all of us, myself included, look at I'm making a video right now, right? Um, is is at an all-time high, right? So there's so much information being like filtered, uh, filtered, uh, censored, but also sent out. Also understand that the powers that be that control everything, they also control what they allow to get leaked out. So remember that when you're when you're listening to all these things with an ear of discernment, a heart of discernment, that if it's out somewhere, whether it's the dark web or mainstream or social media, whatever form of um, information sending we're using, we'll say, the powers that be have control over all of it. And so I ask myself, well, if all these things are like, why are they telling what, why, why are they allowing it to be leaked? Right. Because a lot of the conspiracy theories have fear energy within them. Now, understand when I say a lot of the conspiracy theories hold a shitload of truth, a hundred thousand percent not denying that whatsoever in fact spirit tells me that anything that any of us talks about down here on the earth plane holds truth because as soon as we speak it it is spoken it is it is manifested in some way shape or form in this quantum reality that we live in it is in the akashic field it's in the akashic record we have a thought of it we speak it we have now manifested it energetically in some way shape or forms which means even lies are truths if that that, that can get a little uh, hard for people to grasp and wrap their brain around I get that but that's how I'm showing it's like everything is true everything ha holds truth to it okay now this comes down to being a conscious creator and what are we choosing to create once we start remembering who we are we're God we're God consciousness. Every single one of us has God consciousness within our coding. We can't not. And that even goes for, you know, things that are perhaps man-made because wasn't man made essentially by source. So there's always source code, source consciousness, God consciousness within anything and everything on this earth plane, phys physically, spiritually it, it there there can't not be source within everything even the man-made things it doesn't even make sense when you really break it down but nonetheless we'll have a hard time with that as well because then there becomes this whole conversation of um things having souls and not having souls and again a soul is just a word that we've created down here it's just energy that's that's all everything really is is energy that's it we give it, we dress it up and give it all these, even the higher self, like we give it all these fancy names, but at the end of the day, it's literally just energy. And so when you can really view this game as energy, it helps us to start 
mm, pulling out of the lens of judgment, out of the lens of creating labels for things, right, wrong, black, white, good, bad, uh, all, all this divisive, illusionary separation that we have created down here to play in, right? <clears throat> so with that, with all of these predictions that are coming out, all over the the internet and i don't i don't watch them i really don't i don't have to um i don't and i don't really care <laughs> to be honest and i don't mean that in this i don't care what happens to this earth plane of course i do it's why i do the work i do but i don't feed these things because i do know that there's a lot of truth to all of them i also know physically there's nothing i can really do per se who stop those things from happening. Energetically, that's another story. Energetically, I'm going to continue to work on myself, heal myself, release trauma, release wounding, which in turn naturally raises my vibration, which in turn is what co-creates this new earth internally. And then I start creating it externally with people that are vibrating at a similar resonance right? Again, it's all energy. So the new earth already exists. The old earth exists. They're both going to coexist for as long as we're in existence. There's always the coexistence of all of it all the time. It's what energetic blueprint matrix are you tuning in and tapping into? Because they all have their own matrix, their own web, right? Each, each dimension has its own energetic web that holds it at that vibration, which is really what a matrix is. It's an energetic web. And so, you know, you hear about the 3D, 4D matrix that majority of human collective is still floating in, vibrating in for the most part, embodied. Um, and then a lot of us can tune in, tap into fifth and beyonds, right? But we're not embodying it all the time. It's something we can play with. We're learning how to play with it and tune in and tap in. But really, how do we do that? We have to feel all of the lower matrix vibrations. We have to feel the fear. We have to feel the insecurity, the lack of confidence, the lack of um, the lack of self-worth, right? All, all of that. We have to feel into all those things, meaning we have to acknowledge where we're embodying that where it came from. And that's all this inner work that a shit ton of us light workers have been doing for several years now. And so that is what is co-creating the new earth. It's already happening. It's already happened. It's, it's done. Aho. And so it is, it's already here. It's, are you a vibrational match for it? So do you see it yet? I've seen it. I've seen it many places. I see it within people. It's not always just this physical, everybody's growing their food. And like, yes, there's an aspect of that that happens in the new earth, but it's an energy, my friends. It's an energy that people embody and emanate. And as more of us do that, more of us co-create it on the physical realm and start building those cohesive, a, what people will say are intentional communities. And I will say as a, as a collective, we still have a long way to go with that hundred percent because majority of us still don't even know what's driving our intentions. But that's why doing the inner work is literally your service to self and to the human collective. Because if you know thyself, then you know everything outside of you because you understand, you understand that we are one and we're all connected. So when you really get to know thyself, and how do you do that? Well, first you have to identify everything that's not you within you, all the programs that we have, all the limiting beliefs that came from either ourself or external sources, doesn't matter. It's ours now because we embody it and we believe it. And so we create it. Okay. So it's all, all of this is energy. Everything's energy. And so, you know, the end of the world, from my perspective, is not coming. The end of eras, the end of programs, old narratives um, is always coming. It's been happening. It keeps happening. It's happening today in this now moment. There are more of us that are shedding old versions of ourselves, right? Which is all 
part of the same thing that's happening externally. And so it's already happening. It's going to keep happening. There is going to be death and destruction. There is always death and destruction on this earth plane. That's part of something we chose to incarnate into. But it is the death and destruction that that builds the new as well. So it's just as important as as rebirth, as birth. It's it's the same process. It's actually all intertwined in the same process. So if you can hold a state of trust in yourself, in your intuition, and know that you are divinely protected, you do not have to worry about all of these things that are coming. Because guess what? There's always going to be something coming. There's always going to be a date that they're telling us to prepare for. There's always going to be a natural disaster. Understand most of them aren't natural. A lot of them are man-made. Uh, majority of them are. But guess what? As the collective, we have the capability of offsetting the vibration of what they're putting into the into our environment because we're just as powerful as they are. We are one. And so the more of us that work on ourselves, go deep and in, deep into our our stuff that we don't want to feel, all that uncomfortable shit, right? All the stuff that brings up all these emotions of grief and anger and pain and resentment and guilt and shame and all these beautiful human emotions that we wanted to come feel. That's doing the work. That's co-creating new earth. There's, there's really nothing else to do in a sense right now than work on yourself. And when I say work on yourself, it literally means work on loving yourself. Because we're in a society that has literally taught us to self-loathe, to not love ourselves, And so that's doing the work. That's going against all odds. That's going against the programming of this matrix. The programming of this matrix basically tells us to hate ourselves. And so all the choices we make are very self-sabotaging. We all do it. It's part of our conditioning. So... You want to do something to make a difference, take care of you, love you. You are humanity. You are the human collective. That is you serving the human collective. And when you, when you service yourself first, right, you're now able to give to others without even trying. Your energy just gives. And it's also open to receiving. That's what higher vibrations, when you embody it, feels like. You give without even trying. You give by being authentic, by being real and honest and vulnerable and loving. That's how you give. And you realize, oh my God, I'm not being drained by what I'm giving. And holy shit, I'm also receiving what I'm giving. And I'm not even trying. I'm just working on loving me. And that's really the biggest message right now. Stop focusing on all of the narratives that are just going to keep getting louder because they're going to keep getting louder and it's going to want to suck you in. All of it wants to suck you in. I know. I'm still in a human skin suit. I get sucked in. I get angry about the bullshit that's happening up there. I, of course. But I also know what the solution is. And the solution is to continue to work on myself. Why is it making me angry? Where am I feeling out of control in my own life? We get angry because we're in fear. It's fear consciousness that's running the show, okay? And so when you can start to see fear within yourself, you start using it as a tool. You don't, you don't bypass it. So I'm, this isn't about bypassing what's happening at all. It's about accepting that there's a lot of bad stuff happening. There is. But I have good news. There's just as much, if not more, good stuff that's also happening simultaneously. Because guess what? New Earth and Old Earth simultaneously coexist. Which one do you want to co-create and be part of? Because we can dance in both. And there's no right or wrong. But just understand that these stories that are being pumped everywhere, they want to pull you in. And they want to control you. And the way that you break out of being controlled is by seeing what you're most afraid of and facing it and feeling it. 
This is, this is a daily practice. And I say practice because in the beginning, it feels like this is a lot of fucking work. But once you do it and do it again and do it again, it's who you are. It's not work anymore. It becomes part of who you are. So trust in your intuition. Trust in yourself. Trust in your heart. Your intuition is always giving you subtle messages and clues. Listen to it. You're not crazy. If your intuition is telling you it's time to move somewhere, okay, then listen to it. But don't don't make these rash, like, fear-based. I mean, you can. Again, nothing is right or wrong. But just start becoming more mindful of... Are you allowing fear to misguide you where now you're feeling in a state of anxiety and you're suffering, your body's falling apart, life is falling apart? Like those are all signs from the universe that something's not aligned when everything's falling apart. It's, it's It's a clue to wake up a little bit, to say, whoa, there's a lot of misalignment in my life. Where can I Where can I course correct so I'm not suffering so much anymore? So I'm not living in this state of doom and gloom and waiting for the next big thing to be coming. There's always going to be something big coming. There's always going to be something big coming. But if you can be the calm within the chaos, you're going to be fine. We're going to be okay. I believe this. I trust this. My guides tell me you don't have to prepare for anything. You're intuitive. And you trust your intuition to a point now that you're going to listen to it. If shit hits the fan where you are, don't worry. You're going to know your next move when you need to know it. Okay? We're going to be okay. We're going to be more than okay. Fuck, we're we're evolving, people. We're going to make fucking huge difference. And we're going to live so much more fulfilling lives where where there's not I, and, and I do believe life is meant to throw us challenges that's how we grow but I don't believe that we are meant to live a life of constant suffering not at all and when we're unconsciously being controlled and driven by fear that's where the suffering comes in and that's where physical dis-ease starts to happen, mental dis-ease, emotional dysregulation, right? That's where that all starts coming in. And then when that's that's all diseased, everything in our external reality starts falling apart. But sometimes things have to fall apart before we can come together again, right? It's all part of it. Every Every aspect of it is part of the process of evolution. So trust yourself, trust your intuition, Tune in, tap into your heart when you're feeling anxious, when you're feeling pulled into all of these narratives and these stories, take a breath, go out in nature, take a breath, take a breath, take a breath, put your hand on your heart. And remember that you are divinely protected because you are God consciousness and you can rise above anything. I love you.